The name for Maundy Thursday comes from the same word that means commandment. We get the title from uh, the Latin word mandatum, which means uh, mandate or commandment. The mandate that we have been given by Jesus to love one another. Uh, this is a service of uh, depiction of the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples before his, uh, before his death. And on this day, we commemorate Jesus' institution of the Holy Eucharist. When he says, do this in remembrance of me. One of the great commandments from Jesus that, that sets up the sacraments of the church. Uh, and pretty much the whole service of Maundy Thursday is taken from John's Gospel. Uh, John uh, has this long uh, text about uh, the Last Supper, and then Jesus gives a long teaching, right? And that teaching begins with a mandate that says, right, I give you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. His disciples to love one another as he loved them. This is a very important day for the church. Uh, Jesus showed his disciples an example of servanthood. The disciples were already arguing about who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And Jesus caught their discussion and uh, taught them a lesson at the, at the feast, as we find in um, John chapter 13. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And uh, we meet to uh, celebrate the Last Supper as a constant reminder of that event uh, when Jesus actually washed his disciples' feet, um, which is also what we are supposed to be doing in terms of serving one another. The clergy might wash particular members of the congregation's feet. The congregation may wa wash each other's feet. You don't have to go up if you don't feel like doing anything with feet. Um, but this also is um, something that Jesus told his followers to do. Um, to wash each other's feet, to serve each other in humility is really um, at the heart of that practice. It's a day to love one another and to show that kind of love by washing one another's feet. What's interesting is in his, in his final discourse with his friends, right, in this last meal that Jesus shares in uh, John's Gospel, Communion is left out, right? It's, a, it's there in all of the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But in John, uh, it's skipped over. And that doesn't mean it, it doesn't happen or that there's any consistency. But what takes its place is, uh, is this sort of surprising act, uh, right? That before dinner, uh, Jesus wraps a towel around his waist and washes his disciples' feet. And that this is a, it's a supreme act of humility and, uh, and service and that we are instructed uh, to, do, to do the same thing. And I'm always struck that it happens on uh, Maundy Thursday, right? That as we begin this triduum, right? Which is a fancy Latin word for three days. As we begin the, the last three days of Christ's life, um, that we begin with these three sort of essential things. Communion, foot washing, right? And the mandate to, uh, to love as Christ loved us. And, it feels to me almost as if um, we're given them at this time to sustain us through the next three days, right? To remind us that, we are, that we're in it together, that Christ is, is with us in the breaking of bread, um, and that even uh, if you're not going to do communion on Good Friday, um, even if you lose all hope by the end, uh, right before Sunday morning, that the love of Christ, right? that this command to love remains. Uh, in some churches, there is also the practice of um, a simple meal, uh, an agape meal after church. Some people do it before uh, the service where we gather in uh, church halls and have a meatless meal, perhaps of soup and salad and bread. Uh, very little conversation. Uh, there might be someone reading from the scriptures while we, while we eat. Uh, in silence. Um, in some places, we also have the opportunity again of, uh, during the Agape meal, of not serving yourself, but serving one another. Uh, another great opportunity for us to um, put into practice the words that we were given by Jesus to love and serve one another. 
Also at Maundy Thursday, one thing that you might see, we do it here, um, is that the communion elements at the end of the service may be processed over to another altar or to another part of the church. And then those communion elements are used on Good Friday. The real presence of Jesus will stay there overnight and we'll have people come in an hour at a time to spend an hour with Jesus to watch with him on the night before he died for us. And so on this day, what, what is called to mind is the tremendous gift that we're given in the sacrament of Christ's presence in his body and blood, that no matter um, where we are in the world, when we come to the Eucharist, that Jesus promises to be there. Uh, just the last thing I would say about Monday Thursday is, I remember a, a seminary professor of mine saying that these uh, these services, right, these Holy Week services, that they, they convert people. Um, and uh, honestly, I have to agree with them, right? Uh, my own story uh, is uh, one of conversion from a Maundy Thursday service. Uh, my wife, uh, my now wife, my then girlfriend, brought me to church on Maundy Thursday with her, and it looked like everything else I'd been to, right? We do communion, we do some foot washing, it is what it is. Um, but at the end of the service, right, when the lights go dim and we begin to read Psalm 50 and uh, the choir begins to sing, Abide With Me, uh, the altar guild started taking all of these things out of the nave. Right? They, they rip the tablecloth off of the Lord's table and they empty out the tabernacle, uh, right, where uh, the reserve host and wine is kept. They remove the candles and all of these images that are supposed to remind us and point us to God, it's, it's laid bare. Um, and I just found myself struck by um, the material, like, emptiness of the space. Right, this place that we know so well, this church that we're there every Sunday, the way that it looks um, after the Maundy Thursday service, it, it, the church almost never looks like that, right? It's almost never that empty. There's something about this leaving, right? This removal, um, this emptiness that is left, right? And that is meant to lead us into Good Friday. It's meant to um, it's meant to represent uh, what we are bringing and carrying and leaving with us as we go into this Holy Week, right? That uh, it all gets stripped away and that we're left um, looking for God to replace it.